Okay, we'll make a right here onto Benefit Street. All right, got it. And the house we're looking for is going to be coming up on our right pretty soon. Yeah, Benefit Street is one of the oldest streets in Providence, Rhode Island. Sure. One of the most historic, too. Oh, hey, there's a parking spot right there. I see it. Got it. Now, I see a bunch of stately historic homes on this street. Which one is the one we want? That one right there. The yellow one. There have been so many tragedies inside this home that not only led to a haunting, but it inspired literary master H.P. Lovecraft to write a story about it. We're in Providence to visit the Shunned House. Hey, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Ozier. Welcome to episode 301 of the New England Legends podcast. We appreciate you riding with us as we explore ghosts, monsters, roadside oddities, eccentrics, and all the other weirdness that makes New England so great. And if you've got a story we simply must check out, please reach out to us anytime through our website. Most of our story leads come from you. Now, we're going to explore this tragic Providence haunting after a quick word from this sponsor. So we're in the College Hill section of Providence, Rhode Island. This house on Benefit Street doesn't stand out among the others. No, not really. It's three and a half stories tall, just like many of the houses nearby. Mm -hmm. It's got clapboard siding. It's yellow. There's a nice little stone stairway to the right of the house leading up to the fenced-in yard. If you didn't point it out, it'd be easy to walk right by. Yeah, all true. It's known as the Stephen Harris House after the second owner of the home. And the house was built in 1763 by John Monty and sold to Monty's brother-in-law, Stephen Harris, in 1784. But maybe this place was cursed from the start because, ready for this, Monty built the house over the site of a burial yard. Oh, who does that? <laughs> right? You think there would have been plenty of other space available back then? Nothing like today. I guess maybe sometimes you get a good deal on real estate or something. <laughs> now, in fairness, all the graves were moved to what is now North Burial Ground. Plus, some people just aren't superstitious. Not at first, anyway. But when Stephen Harris and his wife Hannah moved into the house, strange things started happening. Then tragic events soon followed. To find out what happened, let's head back to 1784 and meet Stephen Harris. It's June of 1784 here on Benefit Street in Providence, Rhode Island. The United States of America is still a new country, and it's growing fast. It's a place of opportunity for merchants like 29-year-old Stephen Harris. And this house on the hill overlooking Providence is the perfect castle for the wealthy man and his family. True, there was a small cemetery here before it was built, but progress can't be stopped. So the graves were dug up and the remains and headstones were relocated about a mile north to a larger burial ground. We're pretty sure that all the graves were found before construction began on the house. Pretty sure. <laughs> so Stephen Harris is a merchant. He's wealthy. He owns multiple ships that bring goods to and from various ports and countries. And he and his wife, Hannah, are looking forward to starting the next chapter of their lives. Eight years ago, they lost their son, John, who never reached his first birthday. But this is a new house with a new start. Edmois. Edmois. What was that? I don't know. Maybe it was someone outside? Maybe, but it sounded sort of far away. Anyway, the Harrises haven't lived here very long when bad luck strikes. One of his ships is lost at sea in a storm. It's a total loss of crew and property. Harris is devastated, and it's a big financial hit, too. But these things happen. That's part of the risk in the shipping business. Still, Harris will get back on his feet. In a spot of good news, the couple are expecting a child again. This will be their second. Did you hear that? I did. Yeah, it's really strange. I'm a little creeped out right now. Yeah, me too. Huh. All right. Well, anyway, the Harrises have the good news of a forthcoming child, but with that also comes more tragic news from the sea. Harris just lost another ship. I mean, it's devastating financially. Yeah, these surely are tough times. There's still political tensions with foreign kings, there's pirates, and there's wild weather in the North Atlantic. More months pass, and Hannah Harris goes into labor. But when the baby comes out, it was stillborn. The couple are despondent. So tragic. Harris is suffering a string of bad luck. But bad luck turns around, right? You'd hope it does. But for Harris, this seems to be a new trend. More lost ships, more financial setbacks and hardships. 
And something seems to be off with Hannah. Well, she's been through a lot. Yeah, I'm sure that's part of it. It's now 1786, and 31-year-old Hannah is expecting once again. Everyone is nervous. They've been here before. Hannah is stressed. She wants a child more than anything in the world, but she's not sure she can take another loss. In a turn of good luck, Stephen and Hannah welcome Stephen Monty Harris into the world. The couple are thrilled, but Harris's business continues to suffer, and something's still off with Hannah. Maybe postpartum depression? Uh, maybe that's part of it, but this started before she was pregnant, and it's getting worse. Pretty soon, Hannah is confined to the attic. This is terrible, and with a young child to care for, too. Mes enfants! Mes enfants! Was that H Hannah? Uh I don't know. I mean, it sounded like that same voice that seems to echo through here from time to time, and Hannah doesn't speak French. People outside are hearing it, too. After a few weeks of the anguished cries coming from the upper floor of the Harris house, people start to avoid this house entirely. It's 1789, and Hannah Harris's cries from the upper floor stop. Hannah has passed away. She was 34 years old. By this time, people are spooked. The Harris family had a run of bad luck. They lost children, and now something inside the house drove Hannah mad into an early grave. And that brings us back to today. Okay, there's a lot more to say here. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> so the legend of this house exploded after H.P. Lovecraft used it as the inspiration for his 1937 novella, the Shunned House, which first appeared in a pulp magazine called Weird Tales. And 1937 is a long time after Hannah Harris died in 1789. That it is. Now, H.P. Lovecraft was born in Providence in 1890, so he didn't know any of the Harris family who would have lived in that house. But he did know that house. By the time Lovecraft could stare at it, it was already run down. It was falling apart. It was spooky. And the legend was that the family that lived there had a run of bad events and bad luck. So the legend was already in place, and he just ran with it in his fiction. He did. Okay. So allow me to read a little bit from the first chapter of the story. Lovecraft wrote, What I heard in my youth about the shunned house was merely that people died there in alarmingly great numbers. That, I was told, was why the original owners had moved out some 20 years after building the place. It was plainly unhealthy, perhaps because of the dampness and fungus growth in the cellar, the general sickish smell, the drafts in the hallways, or the quality of the well and pump water. These things were bad enough, and these were all that gained belief among the persons whom I knew. Only the notebook of my antiquarian uncle, Dr. Whipple, revealed to me at length the darker, vaguer surmises which formed an undercurrent of folklore among old-time servants and humble folk. Surmises which never traveled far and which were largely forgotten when Providence grew to be a metropolis with a shifting modern population. The general fact is that the house was never regarded by the solid part of the community as in any real sense haunted. There were no widespread tales of rattling chains, cold currents of air, extinguished lights, or faces at the window. Extremists sometimes said the house was unlucky, but that is as far as even they went. What was really beyond dispute is that a frightful proportion of persons died there, or more accurately, had died there, since after some peculiar happenings over 60 years ago, the building had become deserted through the sheer impossibility of renting it. Yeah, I recognize pieces of that story for sure. Well, legend and folklore inspire fiction, which then alters the folklore. People confuse Lovecraft's story with what really happened. I mean, they say no child could ever be born in that house. That it was cursed by some French woman's grave that was disturbed and never moved. But in reality, Stephen and Hannah Harris did have a child in that house. Stephen Monty Harris was born in 1786, about three years before his mother died, and he lived until 1823. Not exactly a ripe old age. He was only 37, but still an adult. And Stephen Harris remarried a woman named Abigail Cushing. They went on to have nine kids together. The house on Benefit Street remained in the Harris family until 1890, when the last member of the Harris family, listed as an owner, passed away. But it remained in the Harris estate until 1924. So I'm guessing it sat empty from 1890 until 1924. Which was prime Lovecraft time. Mm. 34 years is a very long time for a house to sit empty, especially in an otherwise populated part of town. 
A dilapidated house begs the question, why isn't someone living there? Is it haunted or cursed or both? And that brings us to After the Legend, where we take a deeper dive into this week's podcast, sometimes very off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons, and we couldn't do what we do without our Patreon patrons. This amazing group of people have been supporting us for a long time. They keep our lights on, the servers humming, and they help us with our travel costs, hosting, promotion, and so much more. They get early ad-free access to all of our new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. They know great content isn't free. If you can help us out, please head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. And if you'd like to see pictures of the Shunt House or click on a link where you can read the H.P. Lovecraft story in its entirety online, uh, just go ahead and click the link on the episode description or go to our website and click on episode 301, The Shunned House. A ghost story. Someone I lives there these. today, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please don't knock Did on the door. Do you knock door. on the door? No, nah, yeah. It's a uh, private property, but um, but it is a historic home, and um, you know there is the little steps there leading up to the backyard, and you mm. can imagine that's probably where a little cemetery was. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, you automatically think of the movie Poltergeist. I know, and we've <laughs> talked about this before. Yeah. Anytime a cemetery is relocated, I promise you. <laughs> They didn't get everybody. Like, right? Maybe there's the 1% that they somehow did. There's yeah. like five graves. They found all five. Like maybe, maybe, maybe. But anytime that happens, these are people making minimum wage. <laughs> and when you see old headstones, the bodies aren't always under them. I know that's right, hard for yeah. people to grasp, right? But sometimes like they hit ledge, they hit a giant rock and they just move over a few feet, yeah. you know, and just keep moving over until they can get down. Oh, the work order says we're only going six feet down, but some people were buried nine feet. Maybe you never know. Well, we're not putting the extra effort in six feet. That's all they're paying us for. Right. It's, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, when you're, when you're moving, it's such a huge undertaking to really try to move the remains in old pine boxes that would have rotted after 50, 60 years. And, and what a mess. It's not going to be like some solid casket you just pull out of the ground and relocate. I yeah. mean, you, you've got to scoop stuff out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be messy. So no <laughs> chance you get everything. Right, you're going to leave something behind you, right? Yeah. What do you got to do? You got to douse it in salt and burn it? Is that, I, you is that know what, what they what? do on Supernatural, the, the TV show? If I, I had to build a house do. over a, a cemetery where there's still human bones, like I think I would just I would cover all the bases. I would get rabbis and priests and ministers <laughs> and imams and uh, salt, uh, pepper, yeah. uh, garlic powder, you know. What uh, happens when uh, like you see a fly in a room in a house like that, just like an Amityville horror? Yeah, like we're done. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Run. One fly, that's all you see. It's that's like, going to freak you out. It's just a fly. One fly got in. Like, I don't <laughs> care. all it takes it's, is one. That's, that's how it start starts. It. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I love ghost stories. I love the, you know, oh, what was that voice and who was it? And, oh, there was a friend. And then it, people speculate. It's almost like, um, you know, the, the rumor mill and gossip like we were talking yeah. about in the, uh, From in, the vault. In the vault. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's how great ghost stories. I don't want to say legends, but great ghost stories start. Sure. No, Word for of sure. mouth. Yeah. No, Did for you sure. Know what's going on in that house across the street from you? And I love that you brought up Amityville because people see those movies or re read the book and they think it's a documentary. Yeah. They think, oh, this is what really happened. Right. But it's been stretched. H.P. Lovecraft did that, right? There was a house with rumors about it that people died. And they, 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 this couple did lose children. They lost one in infancy before they actually moved into the house. So you can't technically right, count it. Right. But it doesn't matter. People don't remember that a century later. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah, there were stillborns, there was probably miscarriages, you know, that she went a long time for not having any children. Yeah. 31 was her first. Right. She was 31. That's pretty old back then. Um, not today, but of course, but back then. And so Lovecraft took that and, and wove this awesome work of fiction and Lovecraft has got fans. There's a, there's a Lovecraft walk you can take in Providence Oh yeah, and you will go down Benefit Street and the tour does stop in front of this house. Never to, got his, uh, never say. got into his stuff. Yeah, I mean, it feel we you know we read a little bit of yep. it, you know, and so um yeah, but he's got fans, man. Oh My sure, goodness yeah. gracious, this, you know people still love Lovecraft, uh, Providence guy, New England guy through yeah. and through. So um, if we head down there sometime, we should look into that being part of our trip. Yeah, we were talking about going down there. At right. some point. We could bring people through for and a little meet and greet, knock on thing. the door. We just <laughs> we'll just like sit on the curb with with beers and bags. And, <laughs> <laughs> brown paper bags and yeah wait for the owners to call the police invite us in or invite or, call, us in. or call the police yeah. i think the police is more likely <laughs> i mean that's what i would do if it was yeah. if i owned that house i'd be like yep they're here again just get them out 
Um, yeah, that's going to be tough, especially since it's such a well-known story through Lovecraft and right. the fans of Lovecraft. They probably visit that house often. If you buy that house, though, you need to know you're buying a piece of New England legend and lore, right? Like, Well, that's what happened with Conjuring, right? Wasn't there an owner at one point, the Conjuring house, that didn't want anything to do with the Conjuring? So the Conjuring house is so... We've been there. We did yeah. an episode there. Um, that story is so different because the people that live there, the Conjuring movie hadn't come out yet. They'd lived there for decades. Right. And then the movie came out and then people figured out that that's the house. And suddenly they thought that was a documentary. And this house that was peaceful, quiet, and fine suddenly became stigmatized. It became a problem. It became a thing. Right. This house, I mean, you know, unless you bought it in before 1930 something. Yeah. It whatever. came with the story. It came yeah. with the story. So you, you would know that like if you were buying it tomorrow, they would say, Hey, by the way, this is the shunned house from HP Lovecraft. People will come by on tours and point at it and things like that. So you just need to be aware. Yeah. You uh, might want to shut the light off on Halloween. Just maybe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there'd be more trick or treaters than you can handle. <laughs> so yeah. So, you, so it, it is a stigmatized property in that it has a story attached to it. And, um, you know, so anyway, uh, if it's still haunted, the owners haven't told us, but it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Like you ever find a bone in the basement? Just be like, oh. That's no one's one ever those, asked them that before. One of those French. Have you cr- looked in the basement have you, yet? I haven't even gone down there yet. We've lived here for six <laughs> years. Never thought of it. This, you know what? Let's go look. Oh my <laughs> goodness. There's headstones down here and everything. I would say that to somebody knocking on the door. Say, would you like to go in the basement and look? Yeah. Let's go take a tour of the house. Sure. Right. And then what would somebody do? Would they go down in the basement? No. With a crazy owner? No. Yeah. No. So somebody would. They'd make that mistake. I'd do it. I'd and then try. they'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I would give it a whirl. I don't, you know, um, but that's what, when a, when a place becomes famous, fame is a powerful force. Yeah. You know, and I don't even mean people. I mean, places can be famous. Sure. Where you're just like, wow, that's the thing. I've read about this story. I'm yep. a fan of this. And I'm now standing at the place that inspired that thing. And that's, it's a powerful thing. What's the biggest one? Biggest one what? Biggest location. Oh, God. That people would visit because of the location itself. Because of the haunting? Yeah. So I went to school not far from the Amityville house. I was going to say that one only because of the the the, the windows. I mean that they're gone house, now, by the way. But they did. They, yeah. It looked haunted. It looked like it, it was looked a like face. a face, yeah. right? So I think just out of uh, the visual aspect of it, that's probably one of the most visited locations. I would think. Yeah. No, uh, I, I've been there. I've been by there. Never inside, but it is a public street, and you are allowed legally to be on the sidewalk. You know, it's crazy. I watched a documentary recently about the whole thing. It was like a three part series, and they do show the neighborhood, and it's just a regular neighborhood. It's a regular house. The houses are closer together than probably your neighborhood, right? But like, they don't make it look that way in the movies. No, you think it's alone on a hill yeah. or whatever. Like no, like the you literally could you know reach out the window and th- you know spit your gum into the other house, right? right. And so um, no, but that house, like I've been there in like May. June doesn't matter. Tuesday, Saturday, <laughs> just stop the car yeah. and and get out and stare at it. Another car will be by to look at it. Yeah, and the neighbors go nuts. I'm sure they yell at you, they swear at you, like get out of here. And you're like, I mean, I was there two minutes tops, yeah. not even just got out of the car, took a picture from the street, which is legal. You yeah. know, I mean, that's like Google, you know, the Google Earth camera. Yeah. That. And, um, and I, that's all I did. And, and people were yelling at me and I'm just like, I get it, but sorry. But can you imagine that you're there for two minutes? You get screamed at. How often are they screaming all day? 20, 30 times a day. That's I don't know. your life. Just yeah. yelling at people on the street. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah. And Move. if that's, and if that's your neighbor, like, okay. So if you buy the Amityville house, you know what you're buying. Yeah. But if you buy the house, like three doors down, <laughs> right. And yeah. you're just like, Oh, what a nice street. And but like, is there anything I should know about this property? Nope. Yeah. Nothing you need nothing to know about, about this, this pro- property. This property is just fine. <laughs> nothing at all to worry about. And the realtor nah. keeps saying that <laughs> this property, nothing wrong with this property. Nothing at all. <laughs> Why do cars keep stopping down the street there? Like, I don't know. Maybe they're having a party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they stay a minute and they leave. That's weird. Is there but I drug? will tell you, there's nothing wrong with this, this property. This property is fine. <laughs> like, is, are those drug dealers? They stop, they stay a minute, then they leave and someone yells at them like, no, 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 not drug dealers and this property's <laughs> fine. Oh, all right. I'll take it. Sign me up. Please help us continue to grow. The more people listening, the more people who share story leads with us. And that gives you something new to look forward to each week. You can help by sharing our episodes on your social media by posting a review for us or telling your friends about us. Your recommendation means a lot to us. So thank you for being a part of our community. We'd like to say merci beaucoup to Lisa Strakowski from the Visit with Spirit podcast for lending her voice acting talents this week. Thank you to our Patreon patrons and our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, 
The bazaar is closer than you think. <laughs>